the context of pictures is absolutely integral to their meaning. Appropriation means taking something for one's own use, typically without permission from or acknowledgement of the owner, creator, or culture of origin. In the visual art world, some forms of appropriation are allowed and even encouraged. And sometimes appropriation is considered inappropriate, lacking creativity, or disrespectful. All art from all time periods exists within the context of human society. As such, it is natural for artists to be influenced and inspired by the art they see as they move through life. Let's look at a chain of inspiration that started with a portrait of a pope. Raphael, a renowned painter of the Italian Renaissance, made this portrait of Pope Julius II. This painting broke with the European tradition of showing the Pope from the front or kneeling in profile. It was also the first portrait of a Pope to show emotion or mood. As Raphael broke with one tradition, he was starting a new one. You can see Raphael's influence on Sebastiano del Piombo's portrait of Pope Clement VII, Carlo Maradi's Pope Clement IX, and in Diego Velazquez's portrait of Pope Innocent X. In the 20th century, Francis Bacon made a series of about 50 paintings inspired specifically by Velazquez's Pope Innocent. This kind of influence and inspiration is very common in the art world, and it is seen as respectful and appropriate. Here is a more contemporary example of the way artists are influenced and inspired by one another. Jonas Ackerland, who directed Beyonce's Hold Up video, was clearly inspired by this video installation called Ever Is Over All, made by Pippoletti Wrist in 1997. Now, let's look at another type of appropriation. Visual artists often appropriate images created by other people. This is okay as long as the artist uses them to create new meanings and associations for their audience. In the early 20th century, surrealist and Dada artists combined a variety of mass-produced printed images to create collages that illustrated unlikely, absurd, or dreamlike fantasies. In her series, Bringing the War Home, Martha Rossler combined images from the Vietnam War with pictures of domestic life in the United States. Rossler found both the photos from the war and the images of home life in the pages of Life magazine. By putting together things that were usually viewed on separate pages, Rossler forced the viewer to consider that the war was not really so far away, and that things at home might not be so idyllic as the magazine made them seem. Contemporary artists in the 21st century also make collages of appropriated images to effectively express themselves and create dynamic, exciting artwork. Whether collages are digital or made by pasting together mass-produced printed images with glue, the important thing is that the images are combined in a way that creates new meanings and new perspectives. When that happens, collage artists can truly call their work their own.
Mass-produced images are also often collaged together in ways that are not particularly artistic. Collections of images and words pasted together with little consideration for art elements and principles may work well if you're making a vision board to encourage yourself or decorating your bedroom. There's nothing wrong with this kind of collage. However, in our school art program, these types of collages may not be turned in for assignments. If you choose to use appropriated images and or collage, the artwork must communicate new and original meaning to your audience, and the design of your collage must be visually pleasing, dynamic, or interesting. This collage of Mickey Mouse, for example, would not be accepted for a school assignment because though it is visually pleasing, it does not create new meaning. However, in this collage, shown here in two versions, the artist, Alec Goss, uses Mickey Mouse to make a political and social statement. The X's over the eyes, the skull on one ear, and the scrawled words famine and greed suggest that you might not want to vote for Tricky Mickey for president. And the artwork becomes even more meaningful if you know that during presidential elections, many people choose Mickey Mouse as a write-in candidate for president on their ballot. Perhaps this understanding brings up questions about our civic responsibilities as voters, or frustration with the electoral process. Interpreting this artwork is enhanced even further if you know that, during and after the Watergate scandal of the early 1970s, President Richard Nixon was often called Tricky Dick. Unless you are using them in your artwork with this level of complexity and meaning, you absolutely may not use or copy drawings, cartoons, or characters created by others in your artwork for school. Use your imagination and create your own characters unless you have a compelling reason to appropriate someone else's work. One option for creating your own characters is to cut and paste different parts of photographs together like artists Romare Bearden and Deborah Roberts. This is a good way to appropriate images in order to make original, meaningful, dynamic, and interesting characters. In addition to drawings, cartoons, and characters, the internet provides easy access to photographs. Artists use photographs made by others in a wide variety of ways. Photos can provide important research material for artists who are trying to make something realistic. The artist who made this sculpture studied internet photos of a pug head from the front, sides, and back in order to model realistic forms in clay. Then she combined them with other animal parts, bat and crocodile, to make a hybrid creature. Similarly, when trying to draw or paint realistic people, landscapes, objects, or animals, looking at and even tracing photos from the internet is a common practice in the art world. People have different opinions on whether or not tracing is appropriate. In this middle school art program, you are allowed to trace, but only from photographs, never from drawings, paintings, or cartoons. In our studio, and in contemporary art in general, the most important thing is for artists to be able to clearly express their ideas, and tracing from a photograph can help a student to do that efficiently, regardless of their drawing skills. Also, tracing a photograph always transforms the image because the artist's unique and individual choices of what to trace and the kinds of marks they use are evident in the final product. 
Because we have access to billions of photographic images on the internet, it is tempting to use them in our artwork by printing them and using the prints in a variety of ways. You may not use a direct print from the internet of any image made by someone else in your artwork for school. However, if you use the Art Studio app on your iPad to significantly manipulate a photograph from the internet, you may print it and use it as part of your artwork. Finally, let's explore the concept of cultural appropriation. The 2017 Oxford Dictionary defines cultural appropriation as the unacknowledged and inappropriate adoption of the customs, practices, and ideas of one people or society by members of another, typically more dominant people or society. In our middle school, we often hear about cultural appropriation at Halloween as we think about what kind of costumes may or may not be considered offensive to others. Cultural appropriation in the art world has been in the news quite a lot lately. Hungarian artist Boglarka Balo replaced the faces of African women from seven different ethnic groups with her own face. Balo says she made this piece to, quote, raise awareness of their secluded cultures, unquote. The people who accuse Balo of cultural appropriation ask, if she wants to raise awareness of the plight of endangered ethnic groups, why would she need to be in the picture at all? In Canada, an art show featuring the paintings of Amanda P.L. was cancelled after many people complained that her work is remarkably similar to native Canadian artists, particularly from the Anishinaabe Nation. National Post Online reported, quote, Amanda P.L. has said her work was inspired by the Woodland School and has acknowledged a similarity to the work of Anishinaabe artist Norval Morriso. The problem for many is that she's white and seems to have made no effort to consult with the Anishinaabe community even after vociferous protest. Outrage over Amanda P.L.'s work has renewed debate over who has the right to use and profit from specific customs. It's a decades-old problem that is only gradually being understood in a field where ideas and images are continually borrowed, traded, and reinvented. There's no easy formula to apply when feelings are hurt. That's part of the problem of cultural appropriation and why people don't always seem to get it is because it is an intellectually demanding process to go through in analyzing each case." Unquote. Hopefully, through the course of this video, you have noticed that there are lots of ways you can appropriate appropriately. You should also understand that it is not always easy to decide if appropriation is okay in the art world. There are three messages to take away from this video. One, be aware of the ways you appropriate ideas and images in art class. Two, ask questions if you are not sure about the ethical considerations involved. And three, Listen carefully to the opinions, feedback, and suggestions of your friends and teachers.